NBA free agency is here. Mavericks fans, it opens here at a couple of hours. We're trying to hit the 19,000 subs here on Dallas Mavericks today. So help us out. We're going to cover every single Mavericks move that happens, every single rumor that's out there. We'll keep you guys in the know on that as well. Just over 300 subs away from 19,000. So hit that big red button. It's YouTube.com slash Mavs TV. Happy free agency, everybody. Harrison Graham here with a quick episode on Mavericks today because there's enough juicy rumors out there. And hell, when Kevin Durant requests a trade out of Brooklyn, we got to keep you guys informed. This coming through just about 45 minutes ago. Sham Sharanya first reported it, and then there's been a ton of other tidbits with it since that Durant has requested a trade. Sounds like Phoenix and Miami are the early front runners, but listen, if you're Nico Harrison, if you're Mark Cuban, if you're the Dallas Mavericks, you'd be dumb to it not at least reach out to the Brooklyn Nets. Obviously, this would be a huge uh, uh, get for Dallas. I'm not necessarily expecting it, but I'll tell you this, this will have a ripple effect. If he gets traded, all of a sudden Kyrie's back on the trade block. This thing is going to be interesting. So we'll see how it plays out. And hey, if you want Kevin Durant in Dallas, just get the KDs flowing down in the comments section. All right, we got a lot more rumors to get into. Obviously, the latest on Jalen Brunson. Here it is. Set to meet with the Mavericks and the Knicks. There was a report that uh, the Miami Heat would meet with him as well. That has been debunked. It does not appear that is going to be the case. We do know for a fact that Mark Cuban is currently in New York, uh, so he's ready to go, ready to meet with Jalen Brunson and his representation. Obviously, all the uh, chatter and reports have been a Knicks lean in the last 48, 72 hours, but the fact that the Mavs are getting a meeting is a good sign. Here's Mark Stein, Mavs owner Mark Cuban, scheduled to be joined by the top team executives Nico Harrison, Michael Finley, Jason Kidd, and as Chris Haynes reports, maybe one or two of Brunson's teammates uh, in New York City with Brunson League sources say. Mark Stein has been all over this uh, from the beginning, so we'll see what happens on that front. It appears, again, that the Knicks are the favorites, but listen, the question I first have is, is this a real meeting or is this kind of going to be a, hey, Brunson, we appreciate it, goodbye, uh, we'll see you down the road type thing, or is JB willing to listen and see what the Mavericks' final pitch is here? I mean, the pitch is pretty simple, right? Hey, we're coming off a run to the conference finals, you and Luka Doncic are starting to mesh together, this team can start winning at a high level right away. Uh, whereas the Knicks obviously are pitching a bigger role, a chance to play for his dad, all that good stuff. So we'll see what happens. I do think uh, maybe uh, this could teeter into day two or day three as Brunson uh, makes his final decisions. But once he decides, we will, of course, have you covered. Give me a percent chance. Fill in the blank. The Mavs have a blank percent chance of re-signing Jalen Brunson. 15, I mean, it, it feels very heavily uh, in the Knicks' favor right now, but things can change. You never know what's going to happen uh, as things progress. I'll give it a 15% chance. Uh, obviously, I'm not super optimistic. I think there's a good chance that the Knicks will land him. Could Colin Sexton be the answer if Jalen Brunson lands in New York? Another report coming out that the loser of the Brunson sweepstakes will make a run at Colin Sexton. He's uh, coming off a torn meniscus that caused him to miss most of last season. But uh, really good player. Now, he is restricted, unlike Brunson, so the Cavaliers can match any contract if they want to. Sam Abiko uh, reported this, that either the Mavericks or Knicks, whoever doesn't land Jalen Brunson, will make an aggressive run at Sexton, sources said. Sexton is plan B in both of those places. Look, I like Colin Sexton a lot. I think if you can get him, he's the ideal Brunson replacement. I think their games are pretty similar. They're both score-first guards. Uh, I think he can play off ball like Brunson can. He can play on ball like Brunson can. He should be able to play next to Luka Doncic. And you're talking about a guy who's actually been – a higher score in his career, 20 points in his career uh, in the NBA just two seasons ago. I think he averaged 23, 24 a game for Cleveland uh, before getting banged up last year. Uh, can create for himself, for others, a good three-point shooter, 38% uh, since entering the NBA. I like Colin Sexton quite a bit. I think he's a really good player uh, and can be a sidekick offensively next to Luka Doncic and maybe even a slightly better defender as well than a guy like Jalen Brunson. Who do you guys think is the better overall player? Don't get me wrong. I want JB back, but if you could rally with Colin Sexton, I'd be thrilled with that. Type JB for Jalen Brunson. Type CS for Colin Sexton. Who do you guys think is the better player right now?
How about an Evan Fournier sign-in trade? This has been rumored out there as an option as well if Brunson does land in New York and if the Knicks want to unload Fournier's contract, maybe sending him back to Dallas could be a possibility. This has been circulating for the past couple of days. I wouldn't completely hate this. I don't love it, but what we know about Evan Fournier is one of the best catch-and-shoot three-point shooters in the NBA. Uh, I believe set a Nick record for uh, Knicks record for attempted threes and made threes last year, I believe, uh, is correct. On that front, uh, made a bunch of threes, played really, really well uh, overall for the New York Knicks. Uh, you know, 14, 15 point score, 39% three point shooter. Uh, you know, good floor spacer, not going to play any defense uh, for you. But what I like about him is he could start, he could come off the bench. I think you would have to figure that out with Tim Hardaway Jr. One of those guys would start at the two in this scenario. The other guy would come off the bench uh, with Spencer Dinwiddie. You look at his remaining contract, $18 million this upcoming year, uh, just under $19 million the year after that. And then what I really like about Fournier's contract – the final year on his contract, 24-25, 19 million, yes, but it's a team option. So if the Mavs don't like what they see uh, out of Fournier or if they want to move on, they can simply uh, decline that option and uh, he would be a free agent and could re-sign for less or obviously he could move on to another team. If Jalen Brunson is gone, would you take Evan Fournier in Dallas? Would you be cool with the sign and trade there? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'd be fine with it. You know, I don't love Fournier because he doesn't defend, but he's a good floor spacer. He can shoot the ball. I think with Luka, uh, he could excel offensively. Now, we're literally about to be live uh, on Chat Sports uh, in just a few moments. Probably already live, depending on when you're watching this. And I'll be over there breaking down our free agency live coverage. Free agency opens at 5 o'clock Central. We'll be live for several hours tonight, live again tomorrow, uh, keeping tabs on what's happening with Jalen Brunson, uh, also Kevin Durant uh, after he requests his trade and everything else in between. Every move that happens, every move the Mavs make, we'll cover you over there. We'll also have you covered here as well. YouTube.com slash ChatSportsTV. Join us on NBA Now. Okay, how about a Matisse Thibel trade? Like I said, loaded rumor show today. A lot of stuff going on with free agency set to open in a couple of hours. Reports coming out that the Mavericks would be interested in trading for Thibel. Uh, and you're talking about a guy who's arguably the best perimeter defender in the NBA. He is that good on the defensive side of the ball, and he has been since he entered the NBA a couple of years ago with Philadelphia. The problem with him is at times, especially getting to these playoff series, he's just a bit of a hole offensively. Uh, overall, 50% from the field, but that's a lot of layups he's getting you know, on fast breaks and cuts and stuff like that. Not a great three-point shooter, 31% uh, overall, but – if he could just be like a 35% three-point uh, guy, if he could just develop a bit of a three-point shot, he'd be an excellent player, 3 and D type of guy in this league. I think of a guy like Dorian Fitty smith who couldn't shoot a lick when he came into the NBA, and look at him now. He's one of the best 3 and D role players in the NBA. Uh, Thibel could be a type of player like that. He might even be a better defender than Finney smith who is excellent on that side of the ball. So uh, I, I'd be open to this as well. I think it would be an upgrade over a guy like a job. Josh Green, which is why I proposed this trade idea, Josh Green in a future second for Matisse Thibel. I don't think I'd give up a first for him, but uh, Green in a second. Uh, both uh, players kind of get to hit the reset button. Uh, I think it could make sense for both sides. Would you do this trade? Type T for trade, type P for pass. I'd be very interested in it. Uh, let me know, MFFLs, down in the comments if you would do this Matisse Thibel trade, T for trade, or you can type P for pass down below. All right, uh, getting toward the end here. John Gambardo, a sports radio guy in Arizona, uh, who's connected to the Suns, uh, gets good scoops there, hearing that the Mavericks interested in free agent center from Phoenix, JaVale McGee, could offer him a two-year deal he is seeking. I'd like this a lot as backup center. Uh, listen, he's better than Dwight Powell. I don't think there's any uh, if, ands, or buts about that. You got Christian Wood, who's going to start at the five uh, most likely now. That's an upgrade, obviously. But if you go from Powell and Kleba as your primary center minutes to uh, Wood and then McGee, and then uh, Kleba can play some four five hybrid there, uh, you'd be feeling a lot better about your front court. Uh, JaVale McGee is a perfect backup center in the NBA. He can score around the basket, he can rebound, he can block shots. He's a good screen setter, energy guy, defender. He does a little bit of everything uh, for for the Phoenix Suns, and that'd be a big blow for them. I don't think there's any doubt about that. So if you could get him on board uh, as your backup center, I think that'd be something uh, to be pretty excited about. Of course, he played with the Mavs several years ago, uh, but uh, he's a different player now. He's certainly much more mature and a better asset than he was five, six, seven years ago. 
All right, there you go. All the free agency rumors that are circulating around the Mavs right now uh, jumbled together here in about 12 minutes. So uh, appreciate everybody who's made it this far in the video. Name a player that you want the Mavericks to sign tonight. Let us know in the comment section. And, of course, if the Mavs make moves, you're going to want to be subscribed, youtube.com slash MavsTV. I'll have you covered. Stay tuned and enjoy tonight.